Hello, algebra students. There are two things that I need from you so we can work these problems here. First one is don't panic. I know you guys see the fractions and they can get stressing, but they're not going to be so bad today. And that leads us to the second thing, which is please go get your GED calculator because that's how we're going to handle some of these more complicated computations. Here we go. Okay, first example. Solve negative 6 fifths times the quantity of 60 minus 15y is greater than or equal to 18. A couple of different ways that we could go about this. Really, the first issue we have is the fact that this negative 6 fifths is shoved up against these parentheses, meaning that it's multiplying that grouping. Now, we actually have choices. We could do the multiplication or we could get rid of the multiplication by doing the opposite. But since we've been simplifying before we solve, I think I will just perform the multiplication. We know how to multiply a number by a grouping. It's by distributing, and so we can do that. And negative 6 fifths times 60, you could start that by doing that in your calculator. I think I will do it by hand because it's not too bad, but pick up your GED calculator and you do it that way. Let's race, okay? So let's see, I'll reduce. 5 goes into 5 and 60. 12 times and negative 6 times 12 is negative 72. And for my next act of distribution, I have to make sure that I'm looking at the original fraction. Negative 6 fifths times negative 15. Oh, those are also divisible by 5. So I get 1 and 3. A negative times a negative is a positive, and 6 times 3 is 18y. Beautiful. And that's going to be greater than or equal to 18. And again, you did negative 6 fifths times 60 and negative 6 fifths times negative 15 in your calculator if you don't know how to multiply by a fraction. It's not the end of the world. All right, and now I can see here that my fraction is gone, and it is basically just a simple two-step inequality, meaning that here I have just a y on the left-hand side, and there's a couple of numbers to get rid of. So we're going to move anything adding or subtracting first. The negative 72 is separated from the 18y with that plus sign. It is adding or subtracting with y, and so I will get rid of it, but be careful. If it's negative 72, you need to use positive 72 or plus 72 in order to get it to zero out. And you might say, but what about the plus sign? The plus sign here belongs to the number it's in front of, the 18y. And now let's see what our new equivalent equation will be. Well, subtracting 72 and adding 72 are opposites. They cancel. They zero out. And now I have nothing adding with 18y, so I have just 18y. Adding and subtracting never, ever, ever affect the inequality symbol. It will just stay the way it was. And 18 plus 72, that's 90. And now my letter's almost alone. But there's still an 18 hanging out, and it's multiplying with y, so I will do the opposite. I will divide, and I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So let's see what my new equivalent equation will be. Multiplying by 18 and dividing by 18 are opposites. They cancel. Y is alone just like I wanted. Um, dividing by a negative changes the inequality symbol, but we didn't divide by a negative. It was positive, and so nothing will change there. And then 90 divided by 18, what is that, 5? Haven't had all my coffee yet, you guys, so we're going to use our calculator. So y is greater than or equal to 5. Nice. Now, let's look at the second example here. 4 and 1 thirds minus 7 thirds p is less than or equal to 3 and 3 fourths. This time, if you examine the left-hand side of the inequality, 4 and 1 thirds minus 7 thirds p, there's nothing I can do to simplify that side, right? I can't do that subtraction because they're not like terms. Fraction or not, a plain old number, we call those constant terms, and a variable term, in this case a p term, they are not like, they are not going to combine and so I can't simplify there. Now, if you look at that right-hand side, it's just one number, nothing to simplify.
And so I'm going to get right into the solving here. I've got two numbers to get rid of with P. Notice the 4 and 1 third is separated from P with that subtraction sign. It is a term, something adding or subtracting. The 7 thirds or negative 7 thirds is the way I think of it is shoved up against P, meaning it's multiplying. And when we're solving, we're working the order of operations backwards, as we've talked about. So I am going to get rid of that four and one thirds first. And again, notice my sign. My sign is the opposite of what four and one third is. I want that to go away, to zero out. So I'm gonna to need to subtract it away. And again, you might say, but what about that minus sign? That minus sign belongs to the seven thirds. So I'm gonna do minus four and one third on the left hand side. I'm going to get all the way across the inequality sign to do it over there. And now let's see what my new equivalent inequality will be. If I have four and one thirds and I take it away, I have nothing left. It's zero, but I have nothing minus seven thirds P or I just have negative seven thirds P. That negative sign is still there. It belonged to the seven thirds P. And that's going to be less than or equal to. And you can use your mixed number buttons to type that into the calculator, uh, which is what I'm going to do, even though this one isn't really that bad either. But I know students usually have more struggles with adding and subtracting fractions than they do with multiplying and dividing. Sometimes I say fractions were made for multiplying and dividing, but decimals were made for adding and subtracting. Okay, so I get negative seven twelfths. Now, new equation is negative 7 thirds P is less than or equal to negative 7 twelfths. And again, don't let the fraction freak you out. You can always just go straight by the way that we have been working, which is using inverses or opposites to get P alone. So that negative 7 thirds is shoved up against P. So you could very easily just divide it away. Negative 7 thirds divide on both sides. And then what you would be typing into your calculator is negative 7 twelfths divided by negative 7 thirds. So that is a totally legit way to do that. I love it for students who struggle remembering lots and lots of rules and lots and lots of tricks because inverses or opposites will always work. And so it's nice not have to know another trick. But for those of you who are feeling ready to move on, I am going to do the lovely little thing of multiplying by the reciprocal, the flip of the number. So instead of having it be negative seven thirds, I'm gonna multiply by negative three sevens. And of course I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And I'm going to get the same answer that you would get by doing this work because dividing by a fraction is the same as it is equivalent to multiplying its reciprocal. And let's see why. Take a look at the left hand side. When you multiply a negative times a negative, it becomes a positive. So that canceled. We've got a three on the top and a three on the bottom. So basically a three multiplying and a three dividing that cancels. We've got a seven on the top and a seven on the bottom. Basically a seven multiplying and a seven dividing, that cancels. So another way to get rid of a fraction multiplier is to multiply by its reciprocal, its flip. So then what will we have left on that left-hand side? Just a P like we wanted. Now be careful, whether you multiplied or whether you divided, it was by a negative number. And when you multiply by a negative or number or divide, it flips your inequality symbol. Instead of seeing less than or equal to, I am going to see greater than or equal to. And then on the right-hand side, um, again, you may do negative 7 twelfths times negative 3 sevenths in your calculator, but this one's not so bad because 7 and 7 cancel. And then 3 and 12 have a common factor of 3. I can divide it out of both of them. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And of course, a negative times a negative is a positive, and so I'm left with just one fourth. So final answer here, P is greater than or equal to one fourth. Last example, X minus two, or the quantity of X minus two, I should say, over three. And I say the quantity of, because that whole grouping of X minus two is over three, is greater than two X minus 11. 
So the first thing I don't like is this fraction here. And this fraction, notice how it's dividing everything on that left-hand side. I think I wanna get rid of it right from the start. In order to do that, I am going to multiply everything by the same number, right? Dividing everything by three and multiplying everything by three are opposites, they cancel. But I can only do that if I do it to the right-hand side as well. And remember, multiplication passes out. This is why I beg you to use parentheses for multiplication because I need the entire right-hand side multiplying with three. And let's see what happens. Multiplying and dividing by three are opposites, they cancel. I freed my grouping from that fraction. It's just X minus two. I did multiply, yes, but it was by a positive number, so it's not gonna affect that inequality symbol. And now pass that multiplication out to every term on the right-hand side. So two X times three is six X, and two X times positive 11 is positive 33. Great. Now, this is the first time I've seen something like this on these inequalities today. Look at that, an X on the left-hand side of the inequality and an X on the right-hand side of the inequality. Now, I am going to have some work to do in order to get those X terms together before I start trying to move the numbers away. So, again, when you move a term... You move the entire like x or the entire 6x, you need to do so through addition or subtraction. I think I'll bring the letters to the left, okay, you guys? Even though it gives me negatives here, since I need my letters on the left for an inequality, a final statement of an inequality anyway, in order to be in standard form, basically, you guys. It's not like it's wrong the other way. It's just not how we usually write things. But anyway, since I like the letter on the left, I think I'm going to move it that way right from the start, negatives or not. So um, I have negative 6x or minus 6x on both sides. Now remember, if you don't see a number in front of that x, that's 1x. So if I have 1x's and I take away 6x's, I will now have negative 5x. And again, you can do one minus six in your calculator. You don't need to be great at negatives here. You need to be great at algebra. So I dealt with that part, and now I have my minus two I haven't dealt with, and that's gonna be greater than, greater than, guys, no flip to your inequality sign when you subtract, only when you multiply or divide by a negative. Six X minus six X, of course, is nothing. So we have nothing adding with 33. We have just 33. Wonderful. Now that I got my variable terms to the same side of the inequality, I can start moving my numbers away. And of course, I work the order of operations backwards when I'm, whoa, I tried to do different things on both sides. Watch me, you guys. Um, well, order of operations backwards when I'm solving. So subtract two and add two are opposites they cancel. I have negative five X on the left. I've done nothing to change the inequality sign. 33 plus 2 is 35. I am almost done, but this negative 5 I have to get rid of. It's shoved up against the x. It's multiplying, so I will divide to get rid of it. Remember to divide by exactly what you want to get rid of. And let's see what our final inequality will be here. Multiplying by negative five and dividing by negative five are opposites. They cancel x's alone. And now I did do something that affects the relationship between the left and the right-hand sides. I negated. Remember, when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you change the signs on both sides, and so you're going to change the relationship. This greater than sign is going to flip to be less than. And 35 divided by negative 5 is negative 7. Final answer, x is less than negative 7. All right, you guys. Great job sticking with me. You can see why I put this at experience level practice. Even though our calculator does deal with the fractions, there was there was some uh, algebra in there that could get a little, little tricky, little stuck. So proud of you guys for sticking with me. Happy learning.